warning. Shut up, shut your mouth, and walk away. If you got to run, run, but get the heck out of Dodge before you end up taking the life of the one you love the most. That's the warning. Now listen to the explanation and the details that God showed me in my dream last night. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here with a warning from God. I had a dream last night, and in the dream, I was telling three couples to be aware. One couple, as I recall, was dating. Another couple was married or engaged. So I think it was all three of those, um, all three of those categories. Beware. There is something being conjured up right now. And you're going to notice a lot of people going totally off, out of character. Just people who are normally calm and easygoing just turn suddenly aggressive. Be very careful. Now, the warning that I got was those of you couples who tend to argue, do not engage in an argument. Do not escalate together because what will happen is one will rise up and bring bodily harm if you don't shut up in time. You must shut your mouth, calm yourself down, collect yourself, walk away, run away if need be without explanation. Just get the heck out of Dodge. Because in this dream, the most unlikely people were going after for bodily harm their mate. They were going after them with a vengeance. And people were looking in shock and disbelief because they couldn't believe that that person would do that to them. It just came out of nowhere. So I want to share with you, I believe this is a result. <clears throat> of demonic forces being loosed. Be very careful. If you find yourself feeling irritable way too soon, walk away. If you feel your dander rising in your mouth about to fly open with a bunch of nastiness, walk away or run away. Do whatever you have to do. But don't engage. Don't allow your emotions to fl flare up. Don't allow your mouth to fly open and the bullets to go forward. Don't do it. You will hate yourself for what you say and you will hate yourself for what you may do. The very one you love the most, the very one you cherish the most is the exact one you may have the, the capacity to kill in the heat of passion. And if you don't think it can happen, let me share a personal experience as an explanation of how the nicest people can do the ugliest things and not even be aware they're doing it. When I was in junior high school, no, I was in elementary school in fourth grade. This young lady and I, we were friendly with each other in our classroom, no problem. And these kids tried, tried to egg us on into a fight, and they started shoving us into each other. Well, she got a hold of my hair. And when I was young, I was very tender-headed, very. Oh, boy, you'd make me cry pulling my hair. So when all I knew in my mind was get her hands out of my hair. I was like a robot. Get her hands out of my hair. Totally focused on stopping the pain she was causing me. She and I were the same height. We were both the tallest ones in the classroom, as tall as our teachers. And we're walking, I mean, she's got her hair around my head, around my hair. And I wrapped my hand around hers. So I grabbed her right up to a scalp and I forced her over to the brick wall, which was approximately 10 or 15 feet away from us. As I got her to the brick wall, I only had one thing in mind. Make her let go of my hair. Stop the pain. So as I had a tight grip, 
I started bashing her head up against the brick wall. I wasn't angry. I wanted her to stop hurting me, period. I did not dislike the young lady. I wasn't angry with her. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to fight in the first place. It was stupid. The kids wanted to be entertained at our expense, and I had enough sense to know that. Next thing I knew, share this with you. I'm here at the wall with her head, making her let go of my hair. Next thing I know, somebody from behind, it was a tall man, picks me up. These were the the monitors of the of the hallways, they were paid to, to watch out and supervise what was going on. Well, they were out in the schoolyard because we were, you know, we were getting ready to go home. And he picked me up at, on my waist. Didn't see anybody. I didn't see anything but wall, hair, and let go of me. That's all I saw. I'm flung up in the air. When I'm flung up in the air and landed on my feet, it was like up, down. I look around and I realize we are about 30 feet away from the wall. There is no way he could have moved 30 paces in a two second period. No way. So now I'm scratching my head trying to figure out how did I get from over there to over here? We were at the wall. And the young lady was bent over with her face soaked with tears. And I'm looking at her wondering, why is she bent over? I had my hand on her head. Well, the, a girl standing next to me, one of the instigators, she was sad that she started it because now she's feeling sorry for the young lady. And she said, uh, you, you know, you really hurt her. You got her on the ground and you just kept kicking her in her stomach and you wouldn't stop and you kept kicking her and kicking her and kicking her. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember anything but the wall. Let go of my hair. It hurts. That's all I remember. So what I'm trying to tell you is even people who don't mean any harm, if they're given the right scenario and the right demonic influence, a killing could take place. What if I had had a knife on me? What if someone had put one in my hand and I didn't even know what was going on? What might have happened? You have to be careful not to be so quick to flap your lip, not to be so quick to express what you're feeling. Don't trust your feelings. 70% of your feelings come from a demonic dark influence in the first place. The other 20% comes from your flesh and your emotional scars. Don't trust your feelings, especially when you're angry. In Psalms 37, it says, forsake wrath. Forget it. Drop it. Let it go. Don't take that thing in your hand. That's a deadly weapon. And you have no idea what you're capable of until the right moment presents itself. And some of you will spend the rest of your life behind bars, regretting what you did, but not remembering what you did or why, how you could have done it. Young man I knew went to a church we went to years ago. He and his wife were totally in love with each other. Now, the problem with both of them was they were both on medication for bipolar disorder, both of them. They both knew they had a, a temper problem. They both would get counsel. They'd sit with me in the car. We'd talk for hours. We'd pray. We'd share. We'd discuss. We'd cry. We'd laugh. We'd go through all changes. And one day, and they did it with their pastor too, one day I get a call. He's on the run. Well, what's he on the run for? He's an electrician. He's Mr. Peabody. He's the intellect. I mean, he's the intellectual of the church. And they're saying, well, he and his wife got in an argument. Okay. 
People get in arguments. Yeah, but it got out of hand. Well, how did it get out of hand? Well, there happened to be a metal rod in the room and the other one had strong teeth and a strong grip and a good punch. Now, the way it turned out, it wasn't a one-way fight. This was both of them engaged in physical battle as well as verbal. And they were laughingly, jokingly, the law enforcement jokingly said it like this. She put a hurting on that man. But he lost it. And he took the first thing he could grab. And he stopped that hurting from going down. But while he stopped the hurting from going on, he stopped her from breathing by beating her to death with the rod. Now, I've watched them together. I've watched them argue. I've watched them laugh, joke, play. They truly loved each other. But they were both too out of control. Be very careful. He is now still doing time. He turned himself in after being on the run for four days, hiding out in a hotel. He couldn't take it anymore because he loved his wife. And he turned himself and he felt so bad. And he could not remember touching her, but her blood was all over him. And his blood was all over her, her dead body. Now, I hope that opens your eyes. It could be your child you go off on and kill. You watch your temper. God bless you. God protect you, God keep you, and God give you good sense to shut your mouth and walk away when the evil moment presents itself.